Once the main campaign of any Pokemon game is said and done, you find yourself in the post-game. Some people shiny hunt, others embark on the ambitious goal of completing a living dex, and then there are those who enjoy the thrill of battling with their favorite pocket monsters. This has always been my favorite part of any generation. This, however, has not been the case for Generation 8. Here are the three main reasons for why I stopped playing Pokemon Sword and Shield. In past generations, people were granted an adequate and reasonable amount of time to complete battles, especially with regards to 6v6 singles, one of the hallmark formats for competitive battlers far and wide. This changed seemingly out of nowhere in Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee, where players were subjected to a mere 20 minute battle timer, which is three times less time than what other games found within the same generation offered the player. Games like Sun, Moon, Ultra Sun, and Ultra Moon granted a 60 minute timer, 40 minutes more than what is seen in Let's Go. The mandatory experience share, another terrible feature coincidentally introduced in the hyper-casual Let's Go games, wasn't the only appalling decision that Sword and Shield inherited from said games. Sword and Shield also adopted the incredibly restrictive 20 minute battle timer, effectively rendering an entire style of play virtually unplayable as a result. Why restrict the player in such a way, you ask? The only plausible explanation I can think of is because Game Freak believes that people are too busy nowadays and don't have the time to sink into their products anymore. Yes, I'm being serious, believe it or not. There was an interview around five years ago with Masuda, one of the top dogs at Game Freak, addressing why the Battle Frontier did not make a return in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Here is what was said. We noticed Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire had a lower difficulty level compared to previous Pokemon games. What brought you to this decision? Any chance that future games will have the possibility to adjust difficulty level as seen in Black and White 2? We created a balanced game that was suited for our time and age, where everyone is very busy and young people have various means of entertainment. Using smartphones and other devices, they can access a great number of games, so the time they dedicate to a single game is less than in the past. The player can choose to keep on playing after the main story and continue to the post game, where the difficulty rises and there are much more difficult trainers and challenges to overcome. Why wasn't the Battle Frontier in the remakes? This question is connected with my previous answer. We didn't put the Battle Frontier in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire for this very reason. Interviewers note, in short, he means that they didn't include the Battle Frontier because only a very small part of the players would have fully appreciated and made use of this feature. Nowadays players get bored and frustrated more easily and they aren't interested in things that are so demanding slash challenging. So. As you can see, Masuda believes that people nowadays are too busy to invest the necessary amount of time into their products to justify the inclusion of beloved features, so they're excluded entirely as a result. Not only does this speak to a lack of confidence he has in his own products, but it's wildly delusional and simply not the case. And even if it was, that doesn't mean you should compromise the integrity and quality of your products simply because you believe not enough people will use it, because there's always someone who will. The Battle Frontier, therefore, wasn't omitted due to a lack of time, a reason many like to resort to as an explanation for the lack of quality and content in recent Pokemon titles, but because an arbitrary number of people wouldn't use it for an arbitrary amount of time. A concerning assumption that is an incredibly shallow reason to intentionally avoid including features people enjoy. This entire segment of the interview is very disturbing and can be attributed to a wide range of highly questionable decisions made in Pokemon titles as of late. The worst part is that Masuda recognizes and acknowledges that people do in fact want certain features, but chooses instead to appeal to a hypothetical majority seemingly based on the assumption that they wouldn't use the features so there's no point in putting them in the game, despite the fact that people would use the feature regardless, even if only a minority. The alleged minority of people that did want the Battle Frontier? Too bad. You're not important or relevant enough to warrant its inclusion. Seems like an extraordinarily convenient excuse to avoid going that extra mile to make something truly special for those that actually care about the product. There's so much wrong with these quotes that it would require an entire separate video to fully digest and understand exactly what is being said here. But basically my point is that the timer was most likely shortened because Game Freak essentially believe that people are too busy or distracted to play their games. There's been a major observable shift in the design philosophy at Game Freak and this interview sheds an ugly light on why that may be the case. 
Even with this potential explanation, it still makes absolutely no sense. Making the games easier and outright omitting features you think won't be used is one thing, but why would you go out of your way to actively prevent people from playing your games longer if desired? And in such a manner that discourages continually playing a certain way. This leads me into my next point, which is the problem with the timer itself. The 20 minute battle timer is 20 minutes total. This includes both animations and player choice, which has an allotted time of 1 minute per turn. This primarily impacts 6v6 singles as a majority of games are decided via timer instead of the battle coming to a natural conclusion. This severely detracts from player satisfaction, win or lose, as matches are largely decided by elements outside of their control. An easy fix to this issue is to give the player the option to have more time. Yup, it's that simple. In fact, that option already exists within the game. There's a LAN mode that has an entire section dedicated to customizing match-related timers, which also includes coveted chess timers. The online mode has no such luxury. Even the no restrictions rule set still has a 20 minute restriction, because of course it does. There was a hashtag started recently by PokeMMD, a widely recognized and respected competitive Pokemon battler that aims to address this exact issue, called hashtag bring back timer. He made a video that featured many prominent Pokemon personalities that voiced their concerns regarding the battle timer, in the hopes that something will be done to help rectify the issue. If you're in a similar boat, or simply want to help out, consider spreading the hashtag on the social media platform of your choosing, preferably Twitter. I will leave a link to Pokame's video down below for those that want additional perspective on the issues surrounding the battle timer within Sword and Shield. Dynamax is the latest battle gimmick introduced in Sword and Shield. My main gripe with Dynamax, other than the awful conceptualization, is that it is incredibly broken and over-centralizing, causing the outcome of most battles to be determined solely by the mechanic itself. It's so insanely powerful, in fact, that it was very recently banned from the Smogon Ubers metagame, Smogon's most inclusive tier. The only other thing to be so renowned for its sheer destructive capabilities was the illustrious Mega Rayquaza. Dynamax now resides in the anything goes here, where the only restriction prevents you from stalling a match indefinitely, which serves to accentuate how devastating this mechanic truly is. Normally this would be a cause for celebration as I could enjoy Gen 8 smoke on singles in Sword and Shield, but as we've already established, the battle timer is so restrictive to the point that partaking in such activities is no longer enjoyable. Dynamax was banned from 6v6 Ubers. Imagine the havoc it wreaks in a 3v3 format. 9 out of 10 games are decided by Dynamax which has the 3v3 format become flowcharty and stale fast. There's almost no counterplay to Dynamax outside of reactively Dynamaxing yourself. It's a very anti-fun mechanic through and through, and is the second reason why I stopped playing Sword and Shield. VGC doubles is really the only viable way to play Sword and Shield online in my eyes, as it's not restricted by the timer in any way, and Dynamax can be both played around and played with in more varying and interesting ways. But that highlights additional issues that stem from these two reasons I've mentioned. They make the game very limited, making Sword and Shield one of the least diverse Pokemon titles to play online in recent memory. An easy fix to this issue is to create a rule set that bans Dynamax, called Pierre's Cup. Piers, Marnie's older brother and the former Spike Muth gym leader, straight up admits openly that he doesn't like Dynamax, and I couldn't agree more. Game Freak themselves are cognizant of the idea that maybe not everyone would like to play with Dynamax, going so far as to write a character personifying those exact people. They could create a rule set that bans Dynamax that people could choose to partake in, named after a guy who in the same game doesn't use the mechanic himself. It's perfect. The Verse Recorder, a neat feature that recorded and stored saved battles within it, was first introduced in Pokemon Platinum. Ever since then, it has been a series stable feature that returned generation after generation. Until now. Sword and Shield are the first generation in over a decade to not have the Verse Recorder. The main implications of this is that it makes it extremely difficult for content creators to upload just their battles without the multitude of downtime inherent in regular Pokemon battles. The Verse Recorder cut out all of the fat for you and left you with only the battle, which was perfect for people that wanted to share those battles. The process, now that the Verse Recorder was inexplicably removed for no reason, is mind-numbingly tedious. This torture is exacerbated knowing that this problem was solved 12 years ago on the original DS. 
The lack of the verse recorder also negatively affects players who don't have access to a capture card but wanted to watch over their battles either for enjoyment purposes or to learn how to play the game better by analyzing mistakes made in past battles. Back in the day, often before bed, I would lay down and watch over some of my most hyped matches to relive the glory in a sense. Some battles were extremely satisfying to revel in. I still remember my very first competitive XY team that I bred thanks to the verse recorder. It was a rain team that focused around abusing Heliolisk's dry skin ability with thunder. I saved several replays with that team and watched them many times over. The ability to save only the battle cannot be overstated and was of extreme benefit and convenience, making the recordings even more invaluable. This is no longer possible. This issue is heavily compounded by the first two reasons explored in this video. First, the battle timer forces me to play in formats I'm not particularly fond of, at least compared to 6v6 singles. Then, Dynamax proceeds to ruin the experience further by being ridiculously broken and over-centralizing. And then, after all of that, I'm forced to painstakingly edit my own battles manually, despite that not being the case just last generation. One thing after another after another all serve as deterrents discouraging me from partaking in and enjoying one of my all-time favorite parts of any generation. Disappointing and unfortunate. An easy fix for this issue is to not remove the verse recorder in the first place. Yeah. Those are the three reasons why I stopped playing Pokemon Sword and Shield alongside three easy fixes. If you enjoyed the vid, consider leaving a like, as it helps a lot. If you want to further support both myself and this channel, then I personally recommend subscribing. It's free. Socials are down below in the description as well for those interested. I recently started to actually use my Instagram, which will mostly be a mod repository where they can be more easily displayed. A huge thanks to my patrons and YouTube members for your continued support. It's greatly appreciated. With all that being said, thanks for watching you guys.